breaking news. You're live in the CNN newsroom. I'm Anna Cabrera in New York. The breaking news right now on CNN. Much of Manhattan is in the dark right now. On this Saturday night, it's been more than three hours of little lights, no electricity, no air conditioning. Across a very large swath of Manhattan, the busiest part of New York City, the famous electric billboards in Times Square, many of them are in the dark. Theaters close their doors. Con Edison estimates 51,000 customers are without power. The numbers are still climbing as they are working to restore service. The police department is pointing to a manhole fire as the cause. Um, and according to the mayor, Bill de Blasio, no foul play is involved. However, it is worth noting, we're just getting word, the mayor is returning to New York City from the campaign trail. He's currently in Iowa. So for now, much of Manhattan on a hot Saturday night in July is in the dark. Let's go live to Polo Sandoval, joining us from the streets where the power is out. Polo, fill us in on what's happening there now. You know, I know when Mayor de Blasio returns from the campaign trail, he's going to find some of those 50,000 customers basically in the streets here. Uh, important to point out that it's already been several, several hours that people have been in the dark. So many of these people have to take to the streets either on a motorcycle or on foot, and including some of the folks who have traveled here all the way from South Texas. Hector and Denise, step right up here. Uh, I can't believe that uh, we are running into each other. You are from my hometown of McAllen, Texas. Correct. Yeah, we were walking by. We saw you. <laughs> So you're certainly going to find just about uh, anybody here on the streets. Hector, tell me a little bit about what it's been like for you and your daughter who's here celebrating her Sweet 16. This is not what you expected when you came to the Big Apple for the first time from, from, from South Texas, is it? Correct. It's been an amazing experience, though. We've enjoyed every minute here in New York. Uh, unfortunately, the lights did go out, uh, but uh, we're going to make the best of it. And uh, we're going to go down for a walk because we were staying at the Sheraton, and it was affected by the blackout. So uh, we came down the street and ran into you. I just spoke to some people that were staying in your hotel. They were like on the 25th, 26th floor. So there was no chance that they were going to be hiking up that uh, up those stairs for you. You said you were on the 14th we're, floor? We're on the 20th floor. 20th floor. Coming down was easy, but I'm pretty sure going back up is going to be really hard. So we're just going to stay down here until the lights come back on. How about your phones? Are you, do you have enough power just in case this goes a couple more hours? Yeah, luckily I have my backup, so uh, I do have power. Yeah. So what's next for you, Denise? You're celebrating your 16th birthday. The lights went out in New York just for you, maybe. Um, what happens next, though? Is this uh, kind of a story that you're going to get to tell your friends when you head back to Texas? Definitely. I, I'll, have a lot of, I'll have a lot of things to tell them about this. My first time being in New York also. So you probably saw what this looks like, usually all lit up. I mean, pretty significant, stark difference. Yes. So, Dad, what's next for you then, uh, uh, depending uh, on when power will come back or not? What are you going to do tonight? Tonight we're going to head back to the hotel, get some rest, and tomorrow we'll go see a Yankee game against uh, the Blue Jays. And then uh, we'll do Ellis Island the day after that and enjoy the rest of the week here in uh, New York. We've, I've been asked about the heat, right? Uh, uh, back where we're from, the heat index is, what, 115 degrees, so this is nothing, but it's still a little warm. Yeah, it's a different type of heat over here, but uh, we've managed to get through it, uh, but nothing like the valley heat, uh, so it's... It's tolerable. You made it through 115, you'll make it through this, right? <laughs> All right. Thank you All so right. much, Hector no Denise. Best of luck. Happy birthday to you. Thanks so much for talking to us on CNN. Safe travels back home to the Rio Grande Valley. On a, again, and we, we mentioned this in the last hour, people are going to make the best of it. Yes, we're just a couple of blocks away from Times Square, a few blocks from Central Park. So we are getting to see uh, and speak to a lot of tourists who say that, yeah, this does kind of... Uh, uh, it's a sort of a bump in the road for them and their in their vacation. But we're also hearing from native New Yorkers who said, look, many of them have been through it uh, in the 70s. They went through it in 2003. They're going to get through it again today. And oh, it looks like traffic is continuing to flow in a rather orderly way. Is that fair to say? It is. I've seen officers at some intersections. We are still close enough to the part of Manhattan that still has power, that still has traffic lights moving. But you take a drive or, or, or walk just a couple of blocks west of where I'm standing, and many of those lights are out. So that's where the NYPD and traffic control has their officers out there in full force, basically making sure that nobody gets hurt. And I'll tell this to you again, it really was impressive to see some local business owners and employees to take to the streets with fluorescent vests to direct traffic, taking things into their own hands. 
plans to make sure that everybody stays safe. But ultimately, though, obviously, the NYPD is stepping in to make sure that both pedestrians and drivers are staying safe right now. Breaking news, Con Edison now reporting some good news. 30,000 customers, we're told, are still affected by the New York City blackout, which at one point affected more than 60,000 people. That was just before the break. Now, Governor Andrew Cuomo, who we just spoke to, told me he's going to ask the National Guard to help with traffic control. The concern, obviously, being the danger of drivers on dark streets. You see just how dark it is out there right now. I want to bring in CNN's National Security Analyst, Samantha Vinograd. Um, obviously, this is an issue. So many people in such a small area when we're talking about Manhattan. Good news is it sounds like they may be starting to restore power. But when you hear National Guard, that sounds serious. Well, we have to think about the, the different kinds of people impacted. We had the New York residents. Con Ed just said the power is going to be restored to tens of thousands more by midnight. That's positive. But we have several thousand tourists that are currently in the city for a variety of reasons. I was just at the Jennifer Lopez concert. We were evacuated from Madison Square Garden. And I heard many concert goers indicating that they were trapped in Manhattan because Long Island Railroad and other forms of transportation were potentially down. National Guard can be deployed to help with traffic and safety issues. I just ran here on the street, Anna, and there's chaos. There are cars that are stopped on 7th and 8th Avenue. There are traffic lights that are still on. But the National Guard can help both the traffic flows within the, within the city and then any additional vehicular traffic trying to exit Manhattan Island because perhaps other forms of uh, uh, transportation are down. The immediate issue, however, Anna, is much more serious. Because of the power out outage, there's an immediate need to stabilize high-risk individuals. That could be hospitals, the elderly, people without air conditioning. And that's the immediate first step that I imagine first responders are looking into while dealing with the secondary issue of trying to get people around the city and out of the city as necessary. In fact, when you, when you talk about the hospital and people who are vulnerable, we spoke with the New York City Council speaker here and he, he did mention one of the hospitals that he knew of that was already running on backup mm -hmm. generators. And he said they didn't have air conditioning because of having how they were dealing with this. So that is a, a very serious concern. You talked about the J-Lo concert. We know that was at Madison Square Garden. The power went out there. I want to show the incredible moment where Jennifer Lopez was set to perform for the concert goers. When that power went out, the lights you see on right now are the emergency lights. This was what that moment looked like for J-Lo. Hi guys, so we're backstage. They just told me to get off stage. I was waiting there. Obviously all the power went out uh, in the city and obviously here at Madison Square Garden while we were in the middle of our show. Actually, we have just started our show. Um, they're asking everybody to evacuate very slowly and calmly. Um, and, uh, and that's what we're going to have to do. Obviously, we're going to reschedule this show. Um, there's the alarm going off telling everybody in the announcements uh, to evacuate. I am obviously heartbroken and devastated. Attention, attention, Mr. Building Engineer. Here we go. Through a citywide powder outage. Powder outage. We're going to interrupt this event. We, I love you. I am so sorry that this happened in the middle of our moment. This time, um, I'm gonna get back to you guys as soon as I can with when we're gonna reschedule the show. Okay. Okay, there you have it. J Lo captioning that video saying the power is out in New York City and at MSG, Madison Square Garden. Heartbroken to say tonight's show is canceled. We will reschedule. Love you all. Stay safe. Again, Sam. You were there. What was it like from your perspective at that moment? Well, there was confusion originally, but I will say that the uh, Madison Square Garden security team handled this beyond professionally. There was an orderly evacuation from the building, but panic really started to ensue as young children were on the escalators, which weren't working, trying to get out to the street. And the backup generators did kick in, but as we were exiting the building, all of the lights were off, and that caused, again, a lot of the children to have concern. And a lot of people that had traveled into the city for the concert concert to question how they were going to get home, if they could afford to pay for hotels overnight, and really if they were stranded in Manhattan with no options. And there's also the concern, of course, that while things are dark, crime levels are higher. Mm -hmm. Governor Cuomo alluded to this in his remarks. I think he said that policing is more difficult in the dark, which is why he indicated that he's sending more law enforcement professionals immediately to the city to try to make sure that there's not more crime while people are stranded on the island and while the lights are off.